Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Friday Flash. I'm Lynn Hunsaker with Clear Action Continuum. We're talking about how to drive change by influence. This is part of our Smoothing Silos quick tutorials from Clear Action Value Exchange. Formal change management is usually thought of as something that's used when you run into a snag with people adopting something or when you're about to launch something super big in your enterprise. But I found that change management is very useful as a state of mind for me as a manager. I've used these change management techniques in managing customer experience, quality, and marketing over 11 years at Applied Materials and ever since. Essentially what change management is, is re reducing resistance and increasing engagement. I've found that change management is really useful in particular when there are a lot of changes happening, such as uh, shifts in what your co competitors and customers are doing or forces inside and outside your organization. Change management is especially useful for people in marketing, customer success, customer care and customer experience, because we're all stewards of customer intelligence. The rest of the organization that doesn't have a, a, a ready conduit into the customer's world relies on us to help them to embrace customer insights in their mindsets, their daily decisions, and the way that they do handoffs. It's all of that that really spells success for us in great experiences, smooth, seamless and without silos for our customers, improving ease of doing business and improving ease of work. Change management has seven phases and four of them happen before you actually launch something. The first two phases, evaluate and envision, are about identifying your stakeholders. You may actually think that you have only a certain set, but you may not have scoped it right until you've really done the evaluate and envision steps. This, the third and fourth steps are about really understanding your stakeholders' needs and setting things up for success. The last three phases, implement, review, and leverage, happen in an iterative uh, sense that uh, from week one, week two, month one, month two, month three, you're going to be uh, reviewing and leveraging the lessons learned as you go and revisiting your stakeholder templates throughout all seven phases. In the evaluate phase, you're going to uh, look at who's impacted and what do they need for this. You might also do a five whys analysis of why you're embarking on this change. Uh, what's behind that? What's behind that? And what's behind that? At the fifth why, you'll get a sense for, are you on the right track? Or is, is there maybe a better way of going about this? And figuring that out at the get-go can save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of, uh, well, saving face, let's, let's put it that way. Envisioning is where you're involving everyone impacted in the shared vision. You want to paint a compelling picture. Um, you want to look at the pros and cons, what are the dynamics of the forces at play inside your organization and outside? You want to tie this compelling picture to the things that people care about. And then the analysis phase, you're looking at how quickly things could go realistically and recognizing that any kitchen remodel or anything else, there's always at least a 20% uh, addition to what you thought the price was going to be or what the speed was going to be. What is the readiness of different stakeholders? What do they need in order to uh, reduce those barriers and increase their engagement? What are the barriers? What are the backups? Uh, these backup plans or contingencies. And as we've recognized as things have changed so rapidly in recent months, Backup plans are really important to think through early. If we wait too late when we're exhausted, uh, too invested to create backup plans, to do what if scenarios of, of different uh, crises or different uh, uh, things that might shift, 
then these backup plans are, uh, well, not mature enough or not, not existent in order to help us guide our way in a very agile fashion. Then you wanna plan your communication strategy, uh, various things to help people, right? Be they uh, kits, guidelines, ticklers, uh, workshops, training, uh, your politics in terms of uh, executive sponsors and other uh, aspects to take care of for recognizing the realities of your ecosystem and the different milestones that you'll have as you go forth and how you're going to assess um, roadblocks, uh, remove those and also give accolades and um, congratulations to people for the achievements that are made along the way. The fifth step is the implementation. Everyone knows about that. You just get the thing going. But do you have ways of making mid-course adjustments? And then the implementation, you just want to keep things nimble. So review what uh, led to good and bad. Keep improving and capture your learnings as you go. Don't just wait till the end of year, but capture those things and set up some knowledge sharing, uh, knowledge management uh, so that the whole organization is learning. Set up those transparent processes uh, with your stakeholders that so you're engendering trust and uh, true partnership as you go forward. In a force field analysis, you're really looking at uh, two things. First of all, what's on your mind is the driving forces. What are the good things about this? But are you actually seeing it from their perspective? Take the time to observe them, talk with them, understand their viewpoint so that you really are looking at what's in it for me from their angle, not just yours. And first and foremost, understand what's uh, negative, what are the negatives that they see? Maybe it's a threat to their expertise or um, a, a big cost to them in time or, or um, social standing. There are a lot of different uh, costs that people perceive in uh, embracing something different. And so get a thorough analysis of that and look at these as kind of a balance sheet. Uh, prioritize them by, um, by impact and uh, put your focus first and foremost on the restricting forces before you address the driving forces. What can you do to minimize those, especially from the other, from your stakeholders viewpoint? And identifying your stakeholders, it's anybody who has a stake in the outcome or the process of getting there, as well as people who have information or resources that are needed and people who have authority and permission that will be needed to uh, achieve what you need to. So you'll want to identify the role of each stakeholder as a pure stakeholder, a facilitator, or someone who influences and motivates progress, uh, sponsors, people who are in authoritative uh, championing roles, um, and then what contribution is required. They need to make it happen, help it happen, or allow it to happen. Take your findings from the force field analysis and with the perceived costs, what are the ways that you could help reduce those costs? What are some, who are some people that you could bring in or uh, methods that you could use to minimize those negatives so that people can see the positives? And on that vein, from your force field analysis, how can you increase those benefits or bring them to bear earlier in the, the uh, experience that your stakeholders have? And finally, how are you going to involve each stakeholder in defining and adopting a shared vision? It needs to be their own, unless they're viewing it as uh, something that's important to them, something that is vital to their day-to-day -day, uh, existence and happiness. It will always be viewed uh, as uh, something extra, and you're never going to see the traction that you could see if you take these steps. But one thing that really helps is to plot out where the current uh, place that each stakeholder is at now and where you need them to be, say, in the near future. And then as you go through the uh, change management plan and the deployment of your endeavor, you'll find that you may need to shift people uh, back to a, uh, a lesser role or even uh, further in 
to uh, engage engage more heavily. So this is dynamic, and I found it to be really helpful in understanding where we're at and how we need to uh, nurture the uh, evolution of people's uh, uh, um, supportive of what's going on. Then this uh, template here shows the impact of the change, the potential of, of each stakeholder as high, medium, low on the vertical axis. And then on the x-axis, uh, their current uh, support of the change against neutral or supportive. And that's a way of taking the early adopters and uh, involving them in bringing, uh, bringing up the laggards so that you have people a little bit more uh, in the green here. Um, so this is a way to be kind of creative in looking at who can help whom in which ways. In managing resistance, it's important to first just recognize the behavior in an objective sense. Uh, that may mean uh, pointing it out to the other party, but it may mean just keeping it to yourself and looking for what are the reasons behind that behavior. Um, what are the underlying issues that would tell us why this is happening? So maybe do a five whys analysis. When you're really addressing the root cause, then you're not just putting a Band-Aid on the symptom. So focus on the root cause as a, a, a pointer to the next steps that are practical to take. And that may mean just adjusting something on your end or the environment or the ecosystem, or it may mean having a conversation with the uh, stakeholder that's resisting. In any case, follow up so that you're nurturing that trust and partnership. So change management has seven steps and there are many templates that are used to uh, do a thorough job of evaluating, envisioning and so forth. But the templates I've shown you for stakeholder management are the ones that are most overlooked and the ones that we most need, especially now with change happening so rapidly. Change management is vital to every single one of these 10 silos. The operation silos, the execution silos need change management equally to get hearts and minds on the same page and to create seamless experiences for employees and for customers. Uh, gaps that we see in um, Ease of doing business affect customers' experience, and gaps that we see in uh, ease of work affect employee experience. And as we solve these gaps, trust is increased, waste is decreased, and growth uh, occurs more organically. You'll find more about change management and related techniques in the Clear Action Value Exchange. You'll find these six themes of enterprise use of customer insights to drive growth and innovation, compelling customer-centered action through data and metrics that work, customer lifetime value mindsets and actions to get and keep customers, aligned stakeholder motivations for getting everyone on the same page, respecting interdependencies for creativity within boundaries, and consistency to, consistency to intentions for driving commitment. An array of formats is available 24 seven to you in very small bites, five minutes, 10 minutes, up to 40 minutes uh, to help you to navigate challenges as they arise in your everyday work and to make your work more holistic and mature and with the greater strategic impact. Join the Clear Action Value Exchange today. Thank you.